Hi guys, my name's Oscar and I'm a professional photographer based in London, UK. So I often shoot things during the night, so that typically involves things like cityscapes, long exposures, and obviously light painting, which we're gonna be talking about today. I also love shooting sunrises because it really gives you that opportunity to see a side of London, or a city especially, before the chaos during the day. So that kind of thing also really excites me as a photographer. So I'm here tonight with Wex Photo Video for one of their online masterclasses. And I'd also just like to say thank you to Sigma for lending me two of their lenses. So the reason why I favor two of these lenses is because they're really fantastic for night photography, especially within a city like London, uh, where you really sort of favor that wide perspective in order to capture all of the buildings and everything that comes with it. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over some of my light painting techniques that I do in and around London. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's just get straight into the video. So what are we saying down here, maybe? Down there. Yeah, we'll shoot. Obviously got Chardonnay in the background, and we'll do some light painting and stuff like that. <laughs> so we've just arrived at our first location um, for our light painting. So the reason why we've come here is obviously because we've got the Shard in the background, but the main purpose is because we've got this little structure here and with our light painting, we're gonna be looking to sort of highlight certain features of this structure, that being the staircase. Um, so yeah, one thing with light painting that I love doing is kind of accentuating kind of architecture and parts of the structure. Um, so I'm gonna show you exactly how that works uh, now. So uh, our weapon of choice for this particular shot is the Sigma 14 to 24 mil lens. It is a 2.8 aperture lens. So that 2.8 really gives us an extra advantage just for the low light photography, just in case we need to rely on that. Um, another great thing with this lens is the flexibility of the 14 to 24 zoom. So if we want to reframe our shot even just slightly, then we've also got that additional advantage just in case. Okay, so moving on to our light bar, obviously an essential piece of kit here. Uh, this is just a really cheap, accessible um, light bar that I picked up from Amazon. Um, I've been using it for about two years now and it's never failed me. Um, you can, it connects to an app so you can change the colors to whatever you need. Personally, I favor blue a lot, um, which you can see from my Instagram, uh, and sometimes I use the color red as well. And obviously another essential piece of kit is your tripod. You're definitely gonna wanna have a really stable, steady one of these, um, especially because we're gonna be opening up our shutter for potentially six to 10 seconds. Uh, it can vary, and obviously you're gonna want a really stable base for your camera so you can pick up the light trails in the shop. So obviously in terms of camera body, I'm using the Sony a7 III. Uh, this is a really great compact mirrorless body. Um, I've used it for about a year now and it's, it's never failed me really. Another great thing about this is that it's full frame as well, so especially with these super wide lenses that comes in really handy as you are not cropped in at all. And obviously another key reason why I tend to shoot Sony is because of their uh, low light capabilities. Um, you're sometimes able to push the ISO up really high and you're able to come away with a really, really clean image with little grain. Um, and obviously, uh, the autofocus is really strong in these and I also use manual focus a lot for night photography and um, that enables you to get that really sharp focus uh, every time. So also with the Sigma 14-24 to it has a convex front uh, which obviously means you cannot screw ND filters onto the front. Sigma have actually built a clever drop-in system where you can insert ND filters into the back of the lens uh, instead of onto the front. So tonight we're not actually going to be using any ND filters because we aren't going to need any. However, if you're shooting long exposures during the day they come in super handy if you want to catch bus trails or if you want to smooth out motion in the water, for example. Um, so yeah, that's when you would need them for during the day. So as touched on already, the reason why I've come here is because we really liked this shot here. Um, obviously we've got the shard in the background, um, but we've also got this really cool structure here. So we have Cameron here who's going to be helping with some light painting. He's also going to feature as a model and a subject in this shot. Uh, we're thinking of potentially having him sat in this little uh, arch here. Um, and maybe the, the light from the light painting can loop all the way around and connect to him. Uh, that's potentially an idea. Now we're gonna set up all of our stuff, get the tripod out, get the light bar going, and we're literally just gonna show exactly how I get these long exposure shots. <laughs> With a lot of my shoots uh, and photos, I like shooting in uh, vertical or portrait. Um, this is just 
purely purely because uh, for social media and things like that, it really does a lot better and it looks better. Uh, and obviously, this is a, a portrait shot, and for the wide angle, we can really fit in a lot more uh, in vertical. All right, let me just get this framed completely right. Um, so the first one is going to be a quick still shot of Cameron sat uh, as our subject in the middle of this frame here. Uh, the second shot is going to be a light painting one and the third one is going to be a light painting one and they're all going to be uh, masked and layered together in one shot. So for this first shot now, uh, I'm, going to go and, I'm going to get Cameron to go and sit uh, in our little structure over there. Uh, I've got the aperture opened up right to 2.8. Um, I've got the shutter speed set to one third of a second, so it's quite slow, but um, with my night photography, I kind of like to, to push it a little bit just so I can get an extra sharp image and I can rely on my model to stay as still as possible. Uh, and we've got the ISO uh, that, uh, quite low at only 250, so we're going to get minimal grain all around really. Get yourself up there um, as safely as possible. Uh, perfect. And then literally I just want you to sit up there um, back against the wall obviously and I'm going to give you the light bar um, and I'm going to put the diffuser on the light bar as well uh, we'll see how that looks and quite simply I just want you to hold that down by your side like that yeah and I'm just going to run back and get a quick shot of you exactly like this okay so if you can stay as still as possible that would be much appreciated okay so now we've got Cameron in frame just over there um, this is where we're going to get a nice uh, quick shot of him I'm going to whack it into manual focus and um, we've got the magnifier coming on there I'm literally just gonna scroll over and find him, make sure he's completely in focus. Cam, just look at me a sec if you can. If I can double check. Perfect. Nice. Okay, so quite simply, uh, we've got all our settings punched in and all we need to do is snap this quick shot of Cameron. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on a five second, well, we'll, we'll make it a two second timer and we're literally just gonna press the shutter uh, and then I'm going to take my hand away so that if there's any shake, uh, it'll, be, it'll be avoided straight away. Nice, and that way we can ensure that we've got a nice smooth image of Cameron. I'm just going to double check that uh, by zooming in. Uh, and yeah, that looks more than okay. Uh, so yeah, mate, we're all good. You can come down now. Okay, so now for shot number two. Uh, this is where we're going to start our light painting, uh, the stuff you might have been waiting for. So, settings for this shot. Uh, I've given myself about 10 seconds for this first one, so I've worked it on a 10 second exposure, uh, f13, and the ISO is set at 200. Um, so the idea of this shot, we've set it to the colour blue, um, and quite simply, I'm just going to slowly run it around there until the 10 second shutter is up, I'm going to get Cam to work the camera, and he's going to tell me when to start basically. Another thing to keep in mind here is that we've obviously got the camera on the tripod, and since the first shot, We've kept it exactly how it is. Uh, you don't want to move it or make any adjustments once uh, once you've got it framed initially. Otherwise, it'll be a complete nightmare to mask it uh, in post production. Okay, so I'm just going to head down now, and uh, I'll let you know when to start. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to start it probably like here, and just let me know when to start, and I'll run it around this whole area here. Yeah. Okay then. All right. Just focusing, and three, two, one, and go. So nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lovely. That one's so decent. Yeah, yeah. All right, perfect. So that's two of the shots um, out of the three, and we're literally just going to run that exact same thing again, but we're going to go to the the second level of the staircase. So yeah, if we just do that exact same thing again, ten seconds should be fine. And yeah, just let me know when to start, and we'll do that again. Okay, Cam, we're good for the second shot, yeah? Yeah, all good. Okay, so am I? is this a good position for the second one, yeah? You can see me in frame? Just a little bit more in that way. Okay, yeah. about here? Yeah, it's all good. You good? All right, you count me in, yeah? Okay, then. So three, two, one, and go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one. Got all this running around, bloody hell. I know I feel for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's all the shots uh, taken now. We've got the first one of Cam set up here in the frame. Uh, the second one, we've got the first original long exposure. And the third one is the 
last long exposure of the bottom part of the staircase. So now quite simply, I just need to merge these uh, in Lightroom and Photoshop to get our final composition. Okay, so thus far the 14 to 24 has actually performed really well uh, at this location. Because it's quite an awkward angle, what with the tripod and stuff, it can be quite difficult to frame the shot exactly how we want it. Um, but because we've got that flexibility of being able to zoom, we've got the 14 to 24 distance. Um, if I don't quite like the framing, I can potentially adjust it to maybe 16 mil. Uh, that's just a great thing about this lens. Um, so now that we've finished at this location, I think we're going to head to our next location and I'm going to show you what the 14 mil prime can do. Um, so yeah, let's head now. Okay, so we've just arrived at our second location of the night. Uh, we've come to Monument Station. Um, so basically what I'm thinking here is we're going to utilise um, the bus, a bus coming through. So we're going to do a long exposure of a bus. Um, we're also going to add some light painting. Um, and this is going to be our general frame here. So the light painting is going to be up and down the stairs. And obviously we're going to have the bus trail in the background. Um, so yeah, we're just going to get set up. Lens wise, I think we're going to use the Sigma 14mm. Uh, so this is going to be an extremely sharp shot. Um, as we can we can be assured of that. Yeah, we're gonna have the tripod set up just about here and the 14 mil wide angle gives us a really nice shot and we can really maximize the entire frame and get as much as possible in frame. So yeah, uh, let me show you how it's done. So we're just gonna get our tripod. Again, similar to the last location, it's quite an awkward position. So I'm gonna try and maybe get two legs up here uh, and the longer one extended on the bottom. So it's kind of leaning over the top. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to extend it and really just trial and error and see, play with it until I get a nice angle really. Okay, so we've just framed up our shot and we've also just realised that we can use Basically, we can use the railing here as almost like it's acting as a leading line towards the subject. So whenever I'm out doing night stuff, I always try and implement whether that be like a reflection or a leading line or something like that, because that can really add more depth to the photo. And especially with leading lines, you can really sort of draw the eye towards the subject a lot more. And it really kind of makes the image, um, it really kind of makes the image a lot more eye-catching. Um, so yeah, I always try and look out for those kind of things. So. Here again, this image is going to be made of three shots. The first one is going to be a still shot of Cam, um, just stood down there. The second shot is going to be a long exposure of a bus. And the third shot is going to be a light painting going down the stairs. So similarly to last time, we're just going to get Cam to hop in frame. And uh, yeah, we're just going to snap away our first shot. Right, so we're going to get the first shot now. Uh, as I said, it's going to be Cam stood in frame. So in terms of settings, I've gone for a similar one to last time. So we've got one over three seconds, uh, F 1.8, that's the lowest it goes. And then we've just gone for ISO 100. So Cam, if you want to go down there, and I'll kind of, I'll give you a bit of guidance of where to stand. I'm thinking maybe like the first or second step, something like that. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, that's good. And if you put your, your leg up against the wall. Yeah, nice. And then turn on the bar. Yeah, perfect. So I'm just going to bring it into manual focus now um, and obviously we've got focus peaking going on right now so everything in red uh, is sort of telling me what is in focus and we've got the focus magnification here so if I just pull focus on cam there it should be good okay cool so if I've got it on a two second timer. So Cam, if you can stay as still as possible, yeah? Okay, hang on, I'm just gonna wait for a clean frame because of the traffic. Yeah, okay, cool, that should be good, mate. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so for the second shot, we're gonna try and get a bus trail coming around the corner. So I'm gonna actually put this into high speed continuous. So basically when the bus comes, I'm gonna hold down the shutter and make sure the camera is still as possible so that we get a nice burst of the bus coming around. Uh, in terms of settings, we're actually going to use the exact same um, for long exposures and buses. I like to use um, a setting of about one over three seconds, just because you get like a really nice stretch of bus trails. Um, so yeah, we're going to wait for a bus, um, which often involves a lot of standing around, but it's worth it for the shot. 
So when the bus comes, I'm going to hold the shutter and uh, let's see what kind of cool effects we can get. So the bus is just coming around the corner now. I'm going to hold down the shutter now. Perfect, that looked, that looked really cool. So, oh yeah. We've got a really nice few first shots of the bus coming through. We've got a lot of options here. I'll probably use something like that or that. Um, so yeah, that, that works really nicely for our second shot. Okay, so now we've got two out of the three shots done. We're gonna move on to our third shot now. So basically, this is where we're gonna implement the light painting. So essentially, I've given myself about six seconds here, and I'm literally just gonna run down the stairs, go from side to side, and kind of, kind of have a bit of fun and try and create a cool pattern. Uh, this kind of stuff takes a lot of practice, a lot of trial and error. You can't always get it right first time. So don't come here expecting to get it first time because that never happens. Um, you just got to do multiple attempts and you know, you'll get better and better at doing it. So yeah, uh, if I get Cam to come on the camera now, I'm basically going to start here yeah, that was where, yeah. where Cam was stood as because he was holding the bar down by his side. And I'm, I'm thinking I might just run from side to side to fill up this negative space on the stairs. So yeah, you just give me a shout when you're good. All right, are we ready? Yeah, we're good, mate. Yep. Yep. Good then. Three, two, one, and go. Five, four, three, two, one. How was that? Yeah, it turned out really good. good. Let's have a look. It's very smooth. So basically, that kind of lines up really well from where you're holding the bar, yeah, so yeah. I can easily kind of master it in. So yeah, that looks really, that really looks really cool. Okay, so that is our second location done now. Um, we just, we've got all the shots we need for this shot, all three shots. So I think we're gonna head downtown towards St. Paul's Cathedral, because uh, I've got a cool shot in mind there. Um, but yeah, let's head now. Okay, so we've just arrived at our third and final location, uh, like just outside St. Paul's Cathedral. Uh, we're just setting up now. I think I'm gonna go with the 14 to 24, just so we've got that flexibility. So yeah, I've whacked on the 14 to 24. So I'm thinking of, this is quite a classic location for photographers in London, but we've got the this cool black phone box uh, here, and we've got St Paul's Cathedral in the background, and we're kind of we're gonna want to have like a low angle here. That's what I'm thinking. We're gonna have a tripod down there, and we're kind of gonna be looking up at all of that in frame. Obviously, we've got this super wide lens, so we're not gonna have any issues of fitting everything in frame. So I'm just gonna bring my tripod over here. So what I'm looking for here is I'm gonna be having a really low tripod and shooting up. Um, so I think this is looking cool already, really. If I tighten that up like that. So the idea of this shot is we're gonna have Cam again as our subject, stood sort of leant up against that phone box there, and he's gonna be sort of holding the light bar. And what I'm thinking is if we wait for a, a bus to come through, we can get a really nice long exposure of the bus. I've also got this uh, loom cube here. So this is a really strong bright light, and I'm gonna pop it inside the phone box so that uh, all of those glass panels have got a really nice glow to them. Um, so that kind of really helps with the editing as well. It gives it like an extra pop. Okay, so in terms of settings, we're gonna be using some familiar settings to what we've already used. We've got a shutter speed of one over three seconds. Uh, the aperture is set to f2.8, so that's as wide as it goes, so we can let as much light as possible in. And we've gone for ISO 1000. So as I said earlier, we're shooting on the Sony a7 III. So we really have no issues of pushing up the ISO. Um, well over a thousand really because we get minimal grain as these compact cameras really do perform well at night. Uh, we're also going to be shooting on a high speed continuous mode so basically I'm going to be holding down the shutter when the bus goes through the frame uh, and that makes us get a really nice sort of stretched um, a really nice stretched bus trail um, which is kind of what I look for in my photos. Yeah we just need to wait for a bus. Okay so we've got a bus coming now, we've been waiting for a while, but we finally got a bus. So I've got it on high speed continuous. I'm just gonna wait until this comes through. Hold still cam. Perfect. Okay, so we've just finished off our third and final shoot uh, of the night. I think the time now is about 2.30 a.m. So we'll be going for quite a while. Um, but yeah, that was the final shot. It was a lot more simple than the first two, um, but it was just a bit something different. If you felt inspired by this video and you were kind of wanting to get into this yourself, um, it was something that took me uh, a while to get to grips with, especially um, at the beginning, I found it very difficult and I couldn't really find anywhere to 
uh, kind of assist me other than literally going out and trying it myself. I think that's something that you shouldn't be too intimidated by. Um, like you don't have to have the best, like the very best equipment in order to get into this. Um, for example, instead of using an actual light bar, I've tried it before my phone torch and you can get really cool results. Um, there's a lot you can do with minimal equipment. So I wouldn't be put off by thinking you need the best gear in order to get into this. It's just about how much you're willing to put into it. And again, don't be thinking that you have to uh, use a really super wide lens if you want to get into this. You can do some really cool long exposures with really punched in focal lengths. Um, I've, I can pop some of these up on screen. I've done some cool uh, long exposures at about, I think it was about 85 mil or maybe even 200 mil. I know that's a bit of a jump. Um, but yeah, like shooting things like buses, uh, buses going across bridges, um, as long as you've got a stable tripod, the world's your oyster really. You can kind of get really creative with different kinds of long exposures, whether that be light painting or bus trails uh, or anything like that really. And another tip for light painting is that, obviously uh, you saw in the video that I had my friend Cam helping me out. Light painting is something that could often involve like two or three people. So it can, it's always really nice to work with other creators. So if you wanted to get into this, I'd recommend maybe trying to find two or, two or three other people as you can all come together and kind of gel and get like the creative juices flowing and see what you can create. It's really useful to have like one person on the camera, one person doing the actual painting and maybe one person in frame. And even if you haven't got access to those kind of things, like how I first started, I genuinely just had my tripod and my camera on top and worked on like a 10 second timer and then I'll just go in and see what I could create. Like it's all about how much you're willing to put in. It's literally just about trial and error and experimenting as much as possible and failure because you're only going to learn from the failures so just don't be afraid to get stuck in and even if you are stuck for inspiration there's plenty of um, ideas online so maybe look on Instagram type in like light painting or something like that I'm sure there's plenty of inspiration that you can find on there and if you do end up going out make sure that you use the hashtag Wex masterclass which means I can check out your work and everyone else can check out your work I also just want to say a huge thank you to Sigma for lending me these two lenses, both the 14mm uh, f1.8 and the 14 to 24 2.8. Uh, they're both actually available on Wex Photo Video if you want to get your hands on one yourself and go out and see what you can create. And on the note of thanking people, I just want to say a huge thank you to Russell, who's behind camera. He's been with us all night and um, he's got some really useful tips of behind the scenes, especially at weddings. So if you want to go check out his stuff over on the Wex YouTube channel, feel free to go and do so. And finally guys, I just want to say a huge thank you to watching. I really hope that you found the video useful. Um, if you want to go check out my stuff, my name is Oscar. You can find me on Instagram. It's just at the visual life with an underscore at the end. If you want to go check out the photos in full detail, they're on my page. So go check them out, leave a comment. And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, feel free to DM me. And yeah, hopefully catch you sometime soon.